Hello there, and I'd just like to thank you for the privilege of being able to come into your home today and to minister the Word of God. Uh, thank you to Pastor Marcus, and we've blessed times of remembrance uh, when Pastor Marcus was in Northern Ireland. Walking straight in wobbly paths. Just three short points that I want to leave with you. The first one is be content with God. Be content with God. Now, while it's true that we don't have initial control over the circumstances that come upon us, yet we do have control uh, as to how we react to them. Um, many times, you know, as is, as human nature, uh, we, we just go into a panic uh, when circumstances come our way that are adverse to us. And um, it's a bit like, it reminds me of uh, Dad's army. And was it Corporal Jones? He used to say, don't panic, don't panic. And he used to panic even more the more he said it and make pan people panic all around him. And it's just human nature, really, for us to go into panic mode. Um, I remember when uh, in previous employment, I, I had to travel to the city uh, by car. And um, my, th in the mornings, the, the, the traffic was, was terrible. I used to have to just sit and go, it seemed like a centimetre a time. And I was used to that because I'd been on that journey before. Uh, but other people who were coming for the first time, as soon as they saw the big line of traffic, they panicked. They did a U-turn and they went down this way and up this way and down another road. And then what they would have found when they got to that other road was it was just as heavy traffic as it was on this one. And that's why I didn't move. Uh, I stayed on the road uh, because I knew uh, what was ahead if you did a U-turn. And sometimes we feel like doing a U-turn uh, and going off the straight path uh, when things get wobbly. Uh, but can I encourage you to stay with God, to be content uh, with God, uh, even in wobbly circumstances, um, because uh, God is uh, in control, as we'll see a little later. But try not to panic, although we all do. Uh, we're just human. But try to get back to that place of contentment with God. Now, the great thing about the Bible is that it shows us its characters, warts and all. And that's good because sometimes we can think there's some sort of superhumans who never felt the things that we feel. But the Bible tells us different. And in Psalm 55 and many other Psalms, we have the same template where, where, where David seems to panic. And then, and then he eventually comes around and he contents himself in God. In Psalm 55, for example, verse 1, Give ear to my prayer, O God. Hide not yourself from my supplication. Attend to me. Hear me. I mourn. And he makes a noise. Verse 3, um, the voice of the enemy, the oppression of the wicked, they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Verse 4, his heart is sore pain within him. The terrors of death are fallen upon him. Verse 5, fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. Horror has overwhelmed me. And in verse 6, he says what many of us think many a time when troubles come. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I'd fly away. And sometimes you just feel like you want to take wings and fly away from your troubles. But listen. It seems like a different David down in verse 22, but it's the same David. But it's God that has worked in his heart. And he says in verse 22 of that same chapter, where earlier on he's panicking, verse 22, it's like he calms down. Cast your burden upon the Lord. He's laid his burden on the Lord. And he shall sustain you. He shall never allow the righteous to be moved. Verse 23, at the end of it, it says, but I will trust in you. And if you go to the New Testament, you'll see the same sort of thing. And um, we think of Paul, and Paul had so much to contend with. But listen how Paul um, uh, uh, reacts. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And Paul had found a contentment in God, even in the midst of the worst of circumstances. And I, can I just say to you before we leave this point that the key to contentment is this, that God will give us in our present circumstances, no matter what they are, everything we need to endure and to draw closer to him. He will supply us with whatever we need, with the grace that we need, with the strength that we need, with whatever we need if we rest in him and trust in him and abide in him and look to him and be content with God eh, when the paths are wobbly. The second thing I want to look, not only be content with God, but be comforted by God. What do I mean? 
Well, sometimes because of circumstances, we start to feel, you know, God has forgotten us. God is against me because of all the things that have happened to me. And forgive me for using the dad's army uh, illustration again, but I think it's Fraser, uh, the Scottish guy, who says, you know, when things go wrong, we're doomed, we're doomed, we're doomed. And sometimes in our Christian life, we can get like that. We can say we're doomed, you know, everything's going against us. It happened to Jacob. Jacob says, all these things are against me. Uh, another translation says, everything happens to me. Do you ever feel like that? It just feels like everything happens to me and the whole world uh, seems to be coming out down around me. And we feel like that many a time. But in Romans chapter 8, it says this. And listen to all the circumstances that Paul mentions here. Maybe he'll mention some of yours. And if he doesn't, put yours in here, okay? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation? Distress? Persecution? Famine? Nakedness? Or sword? I am persuaded that neither death nor life, angels nor principalities, powers nor things present, things to come, height, depth, nor any other creature. He's gone through everything except the kitchen sink. Throw in your circumstance there as well. And you can still say none of these things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why? Because in all of these things, verse 37, we're more than conquerors. It's one thing to be a conqueror, but there's something supernatural about being more than a conqueror. Before we leave this point, I just want to leave you with this fact that God is surrounding you. And be comforted in this fact. Be comforted that God will never leave you nor forsake you, not for one second. You know, even in death. You know, whatever millisecond or nanosecond it takes to go from, from this world into the next, and whatever that milli, milli nanosecond is, um, even in that period of time, that short, short nanosecond, God won't even leave you then. Because in Romans 8, it says, neither in death nor in life. There's no circumstance that God will leave you, not even in that little moment that you pass from being absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. God is surrounding you. Remember this, that... Christ is in you. He's surrounding you. He's in you. The hope of glory. He's by your side. He says, I'll be with you until the end of the age. He has gone before you in Deuteronomy 31. In Deuteronomy 33, the everlasting arms are underneath you. No matter how low you go, the everlasting arms are underneath. Maybe you go even lower tomorrow. That verse still stands true. No matter how low you go, the everlasting arms are still underneath. He's watching over you in Psalm 121 and in Psalm 23. His goodness and mercy are tracking you. They're stalking you. Wherever you go, his goodness and mercy follow after you. Whether it's into the lowest pit, it doesn't matter. Listen, Joseph was in the pit and uh, God's goodness and mercy were following him. Joseph was in the prison. God's goodness and mercy were following him. Uh, God... Uh, whether Joseph was in the palace or in the prison, his mercy, God's mercy was hot on his heels. And listen, at the end of it all, when he was in the palace, Joseph said, you meant all these things for evil, but God meant them for good. His goodness and mercy are following hot on your heels today. So be content with God. Be confident in God. Sorry, be confident, be comforted by God uh, and be confident in God. You know, somebody said, don't tell God uh, how big your problem is, but tell your problem what a big God you have, who is in control no matter what circumstances. God is in control. You know, was God just as much in control when Daniel was in the lion's den as he was when he was given that place of authority in the kingdom? God was just as much in control in both circumstances. Was God in control when David was running from Saul uh, just as much as he was when David was in the palace? Yes, he was. It was just the same control in both circumstances. As we have seen, was God just as much in control when Joseph was in the pit and the prison as when he was in the palace? Yes, the same God was in control of all situations. And God has got it. God has got your situation. God has got your situation. You're in the palm of his hand. Um, if this, wait till I get something here. Um, here's a pen. If this is you, uh, this is you in God's hand, okay? And then, uh, sorry, it's in Jesus' hand, okay? And then uh, God has got you in his hand as well. 
because Jesus says, um, none shall pluck them out of my hand, nor anybody shall pluck them out of my Father's hand. You are in the control of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit is superintending everything as well that is going on in your life. So be courageous and be confident in God eh, because he is in control. But finally, be courageous and be confident in God for this reason. If we turn to Ephesians 1, it says in verse 19, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is operating in your life. So you can be confident, you can be courageous in this fact that it's not your strength uh, as you go on this wobbly path. Uh, it's not your strength that keeps you walking in a straight path. It's the power of Almighty God, the almighty resurrection power of our God uh, that keeps you uh, in those circumstances. So be confident and be courageous. Listen, be content with God. Be comforted by God. Be confident and courageous in God. I want to leave you finally with a short poem uh, that many believe was written by Corrie Ten Boom, but it wasn't written by her. She quoted it so much uh, that people thought she wrote it, but she didn't. But she quoted it a lot, and this made this meant a lot to this lady. And uh, you think about her, and we'll tell you a bit more about her uh, as we finish this. But listen to this poem. My life is but a weaving between my Lord and me. I cannot choose the colours. He worketh steadily. Oft times he weaveth sorrow, and I in foolish pride forget he sees the upper and I the underside. Not till the loom is silent and the shuttle cease to fly shall God unveil the canvas and explain the reason why. The dark threads are so needful in the weaver's skillful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern he has planned. He knows, he loves, he cares. Nothing this truth can dim. He gives the very best to those who leave the choice with him. Quoted by a lady who lived through a concentration camp, who lived through a virtual hell on earth, who watched her sister die in the concentration camp, who watched nine other family members go into a concentration camp. And yet she rests in that fact that just like the weaver is weaving the pattern of, of whatever he's making. God is weaving our lives. And sometimes we just see the underside, the threads that hang bare underneath. But God sees the upper side. And God is going to make something beautiful in, in our lives. And you know when it would be most beautiful? When we enter through the gates of glory. When he takes us by the hand. When we walk with our Savior. And there will be no more tears. No more crying. No more wobbly paths. But we'll walk in a straight path for all eternity with him. Hand in hand with Jesus our Savior forever. May God bless you. May God comfort and strengthen you in these difficult times. Amen.